Hey everyone, Chris here. Welcome to our series on the Legend Hobby T28 Trojan. This is a big, almost ready to fly model and we have finally started the project and so I'm really excited to get into it with you guys. Now, the model itself, it's an 86 and a half inch wingspan. We are going with a three cylinder radial engine in this thing. I'm super excited to uh, get it flown because it's gonna sound amazing. And so as I mentioned, this is an almost ready to fly model which means that it comes out of the box all pre-built, uh, pre-covered. And so we gotta go through the process of installing servos, retracts, landing gear, engine. And so in this video, we're going through all of the flight control setups. Plus we've got a special speed brake that comes standard with the kit as well. Uh, and then also we're gonna finish it up with the cockpit. This has a three piece sliding canopy, but there is some work to be done there to make sure it's working reliably and properly. And we've got some special animated pilots that are gonna be going in it as well. And so let's get into it. There's a lot to get done. We're finally moving forward on this project. I'm super excited about it. So let's go. Now, we wait.
All right, so we have all of the control surfaces in their final. They're all hooked up and working. And you know, there weren't too many surprises there. Uh, I got about partway through and decided to change the hardware from the stock hardware to Dubro uh, hardware because ultimately you never know with ARF hardware sometimes, while it looks pretty decent, uh, generally speaking, I just wanted that extra assurance that I was not gonna have any issues with the hardware at all. But in terms of some highlights, the cool thing about it is that, you know, the flaps are more or less a hidden push rod, which is nice, they run that internally. Uh, I do feel like there's probably enough space that that could be done for the aileron. So if you're doing an ARC, uh, you know, fiberglassing your own, you could potentially change that around to hide that push rod as well. Uh, but otherwise, you know, you've got push rods, flaps, ailerons, and elevators, and then the rudder is a pole pole. No major surprises there, that was all pretty straightforward. Now I did use tight bond wood glue to glue all of the hinges, I've been doing that for decades, quite literally, uh, and it works fantastically, it gives you tons of working time, and you can clean it up with water as you go. So you oil the hinges first, and then you glue it all together, make sure it's good, and then clean all that up with water. Works fantastic. So one thing I do want to mention about the speed brake, uh, you know, they've got a common rod that goes through that acts as your hinge point, if you will. Uh, and so that is all set up with wheel collars. And, you know, it's a really neat idea how they do that. Really simple, uh, but you just want to make sure you take time to make sure that everything is lined up well. So that way you've got a really reliable speed brake working for you. It's a great uh, feature and I'm only using one servo to operate it and it works perfectly fine There's no twisting or anything like that and I look forward to seeing what it looks like in flight The only other thing I want to mention is when you're gluing the horizontal stabilizer use a glue That's going to give you enough working time. I use 30 minute epoxy uh, and I just cleaned it up with lacquer thinner uh, any excess that was on the the outskirts, but you know, double checking that everything was in perfect alignment. So I put the wings on first before I started gluing any of that to make sure that my alignment with the wings was good. Uh, and so I had plenty of room to move it around and make sure that everything was symmetrical uh, based on the epoxy that I used. And so once I was done with all of that, I was happy with the results, everything works fantastically. Uh, I moved on to the canopy and the cockpit. Uh, and so the cool thing about it is this model comes set up for sliding canopies. Uh, and also they provide for you a whole assortment of cockpit parts, which is great. It saves you a bunch of time. But I wanna mention that, you know, putting the canopies together and getting that all functioning, you do wanna take your time. So the way that it's all set up, everything gets held together with magnets. And so the first things first, you've got the frames for the canopies that you have to glue uh, and build, right, and put together. But there are holes for magnets. The forward canopy has single magnets and the rear canopy has double magnets. And so that's one way to tell which one goes forward, which one goes back. But um, you wanna make sure that on the two sides of the frame, those magnets are attracting each other and not repelling. So when you are doing that and putting ma the magnets in there, make sure that everything attracts so that it's gonna hold together nicely. And so that goes with the single magnets in the front and the double magnets in the back, of course. And then from there, I ended up gluing the front windscreen first just to get that all into place. There is a frame there, that first frame, you have to glue in first, of course. And I just use Zap Canopy glue for that. It's, it's just a white glue that dries clear. Uh, and so I glue that first, let it dry, and then I did the middle canopy. You have to build the frame for it. You remove the supports in the middle. Again, I use the canopy glue. Uh, put it all together and held it together with tape, made sure that everything was in alignment and let it dry. And then for the rear canopy, I did the same thing. But the rear canopy is different because you've got the frame you gotta get in first, but after that, you have to put the clear canopy piece in there. And so I used magnets to hold the canopy in place, and then I just flooded it with thin CA uh, to glue it in once I had it all aligned properly. Now I do wanna mention, be careful. If you are using Zip Kicker, it can mar the canopy. I discovered that by accident. You can polish that out, but just avoid using it altogether if you can. And so once I had everything in alignment, I do wanna mention that there are pins at the top of the canopies to align it together. Uh, and on the rear canopy, I actually replaced the stock carbon pin with a steel uh, piano wire. And I added a magnet in the back of the, the, the middle canopy section at the top there. So that way it pulls it nice and closed. 
Uh, so that way I've got three points of attachment for the magnets instead of two. Uh, and that was because it wasn't pulling up super tight when I finished it up. Uh, and so adding that magnet in there with the steel pin pulls it up real nice and tight now. And then lastly, the rear canopy frame is fiberglass. The fit isn't superb near the back, so I used a heat gun to heat it up and try and form it a little bit better. It needs more work and I'll keep working on it, but uh, that's how I'm gonna resolve that ultimately. And then from there, I ended up going into the cockpit. And so, you know, used all of the stock parts for the cockpit. I did have to raise the seats up because they were a bit low, uh, but I do wanna mention that the detail parts at the rear of the cockpit, I made those removable so that way I can still remove the rear canopy completely if I have to. I just used some, you know, wood screws in there uh, to hold that in place, so now I can remove them fairly easily. I've got warbirdpilots.com pilots in here. They are awesome, and they've got servos attached to the heads, which means they are movable. And so I attach those to one of my random servo motion generators, and those guys are looking around, piloting the airplane ready to go. And so it, it's such a cool effect. It's such an easy thing to do, especially when pilots come with servos already in there. So I've got those on my website, of course. The pilots actually came with oxygen masks. I removed those and just made a small mic boom for attached to the helmet because based on pictures, that's more what I saw than actual oxygen hoses, especially for a trainer or craft like this. One last thing related to the cockpit is, you know, the way that it works, the sliding mechanism in there, you screw in some bolts into the bottom. There's blind nuts already installed in the parts for you. And so you can adjust how tight or loose the canopy is. If it's too loose, it kind of makes it difficult to, to move because it'll get kind of cockeyed, but if it's too tight, of course, it's difficult to move too. They are not attached to a servo, they are just manually moved forward and back. Uh, I didn't want to attach them to a servo just because I didn't want to uh, kind of mess with that. I want to keep it simple. And so otherwise, man, with the pilots in there, the cockpit all in there, it looks fantastic. I ended up just dremeling some slots in the, the plastic seats and, and using a cable strap to hold them in place like a seatbelt. Uh, and that worked out pretty well. But otherwise, you know, with all of that done, the last thing I did was on the hatch, I changed out the hatch pin setup. So the way that this is set up out of the box is you, you use two screws to hold the hatch in place. Well, you're gonna wanna take the hatch off semi-regularly to put batteries in and out and all of that stuff too. Uh, and so I ended up adding a hatch latch to uh, the rear here and so that ended up being fairly quick and easy to do with the slot in the hatch for the canopy. Uh, it's really easy to just glue a hatch latch in there. You gotta drill a hole, of course, through the bulkhead in the hatch. I glued a piece of light ply in the back there and uh, with a little bit of wet paint, I dropped the hatch in and pushed the hatch latch pin forward to give me the location where the hole needed to be in the fuselage. And once I had that, I drilled that out. And so now it's a really quick and easy mechanism to release the, the hatch. I did have to lengthen the handle on that hatch latch, if you will, or the hatch pin. And I just glued a brass tube around it uh, to, to extend it. So that way it would pop through the uh, slot that's in the back there. But that was just one modification. So what I'll do is I'll cover up those holes in uh, the fuselage with some ore cover and we'll never know they were there. All right, we've got all our fly control set up working flawlessly. We've got the canopy and cockpit all situated and I love those animated pilots from warbirdpilots.com. Uh, they look fantastic and having to move with one of my random servo motion generators, really, man, it's the icing on the cake. And so from here, we're gonna get into the retract installation. We've got some pneumatic air gear from a Sierra Giant Scale that come from Legend Hobby. And so we're gonna go through the whole setup there. Otherwise, if you'd like to see everything that comes in this kit, you can see that here. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.